everybody, it's Simon at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This kickstarts my 2019 Valentine series. So this is the third Valentine series I've done. In fact, every series I now do this year will be the third one. And I can't believe it. I can't believe how quickly the last two years have gone. So yes, this is gonna be a fun week. So for the next five days, maybe seven, maybe seven, <laughs> there will be a different themed Valentine's project. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday back to back. Like I say with all of my tutorials, you can adapt them. They don't have to just be for Valentine's Day. This could easily be a birthday, you know, project and all the other ones I show you this week could easily be changed up. So if you don't celebrate Valentine's Day, you know, you've got no need for it, still take a look at the tutorials because I'm sure you'll get some inspiration and be able to, you know, adapt them in some way. So this is the first one and this is a heart shaped gift bag and I love this. It's so fun to make and it's so easy, really, really easy. So you can see that I've just got the two little um, ribbon handles. You can make these as long, you know, as short as you want and it just opens up inside and you've just got a really nice little roomy gift bag. These are going to be filled with sweets and the idea for these ones, I think they're going to be, my friends are going to be taking these off my hands to give to their daughters for Valentine's Day. So um, yeah, I just think that's really sweet. So I'm going to be using, and for the rest of the week, I'm actually using these downloaded papers from, just grab them here, from Trimcraft. So if you head over to the craft blog, so www.thecraftblog.co.uk, every month they do free downloadable papers and it's so simple you just click on the freebies once you go onto the website and it will have all of the bits and pieces that they offer and at the top it's got valentine's papers and you just click on that and it will automatically download the file onto your device and these are the ones here so now one thing i will say is when you go on there they look much redder, the papers, and then when you print it, they're more pink. And I did wonder whether it was my ink, but then I'd done a, an ink test and everything said it was fine. And I have printed them with now a newer ink as well, and they are still coming out the same pinky color. So yeah, if you're looking at it and you would rather the red, be prepared that it's possibly gonna be like this. If you're very tech savvy and you know how to change those things maybe, then <laughs> by all means go for it. But they're really, really nice. You get this top sheet here, which is your kind of cutouts. And I've already cut the love here, which was up in this section. But you've also got I love you. And obviously you can print these multiple times. You're the bomb. Treats for my sweets. So I'm gonna make some really, really fun projects using, like I said, these ones. And then you've got this one here. You stole a piece of my heart. This is like brush strokes. And you've got one there with all the hearts all over the top. This one here, which I really like, which is just this same heart, but just shrunk down. And I just, yeah, I like that one. And then this is the other one that I've used today. So this is what I've used for the top, you know, um, pattern there. So really nice. And the fact that they're free is great. I have printed this on smooth 300 GSM white cardstock from Paper Mill Direct. It's fantastic card. I wish I'd found... Well, I've known a Paper Mill Direct a long time, but with me living abroad, it hasn't been something I've been able to get my hands on easily. But me and my mum went and brought a huge wedge. Let me just grab it actually quickly. This huge, huge box arrived and it is very thick and this was filled to the brim and it cost 16.99 it's heavy and it is just filled i've already taken out a wedge but this is filled with such beautiful quality cardstock like i said 300 gsm and it stamps like a dream so if you want to do single um layered cards perfect and it's per your card bases are beautiful and I just thought that was a really, really good buy and I'm certainly going to be buying more. Like I said, Paper Mill Direct, really good, UK online. Go grab those if you want. Obviously, if you don't and you have your own Valentine's papers, then that's no problem at all. And then everything you're going to need. So I have created a template. This is a free template. You just need to go onto my blog and just download, just you know, click on it, save it to your, again, to your device and it will give you this heart shape. Again, if you want to draw your own heart, by all means you can, you don't have to do this, but it was just free and I just thought it was quite handy for you to have. I will may well use this in other tutorials, you know, throughout the year, but um, yeah, I just wanted a nice size heart. If you want to draw this yourself, you're going to need a heart that is round about eight and a half in width, 
and I think the height was seven and three quarters. Yeah, seven and three quarters to eight, but it fits landscape or it will print out landscape on an A4 piece when it obviously comes through your printer. So yeah, if you want to use this same one, head over to my blog. Otherwise you can easily draw a heart, fold a piece of paper in half. So imagine that that's folded in half, draw half of the heart and then cut it out. Okay, so there are ways to do that and you may well have some large heart dies, you can use them as well. Once you see how I do this, it's very easy to adapt and shrink down and then, you know, make bigger, all that kind of stuff. But there's the template, I've gone ahead and done these bits here. I've die cut three butterflies and stuck them on top of each other and put some uh, Spectrum Noir sparkle and a little flat back pearl in the middle. That's that one there, which has already got some foam adhesive on. I've got my ribbon. I've already done the back. You don't need to watch me do both, but that's the back prepped. And then this is for the front. For the inside, to make the bag, you need a strip of three by 12 cardstock. And along the three inch side, you're gonna score at half an inch. Come down a little bit there. Score at half an inch and two and a half. And then along the 12 inch side, you wanna score at six, okay? Fold it in half and then burnish those other outer score lines because they're actually going to be the tabs. If you want to make this a deeper, or I guess if you want this to be wider, just increase this. As long as you've got a half inch tab on each side, because I think that's a good, good tab size to have, you could double this if you want. So you could have it at, you know, if you have it at seven inches wide, half an inch on each side to take off an inch. That means then you could have it six inches wide. I mean, that might be a bit too wide, but you can see what I mean. It's easy to just make this wider. As long as you've got the same 12 inch length, brilliant, but you can make that wider again to suit your needs. Okay, so like I said, very, very straightforward. So if you printed off these papers or whatever paper you're using, and if you're using my heart, it will fit on a A4 uh, or letter paper landscape. Okay, so I'm gonna do it that way. I'm going to pop my heart near to the end here and that way I can uh, save some of the cardstock. Now I'm actually doing, you're probably wondering, so I should be using my template actually that will make more sense to use. This is my template but I've also already gone ahead and cut it out of white cardstock again because I'm actually going to stick this one over the top just to give it strength but you can just use the one piece of cardstock. So if you're just using the one, then you just need to grab your pattern paper, draw around. Always make sure your pencil's really nice and sharp. And the fact that this is printed on 300 GSM cardstock means that it's got a nice, you know, kind of lip so the pencil can lean right against it, um, giving you a really nice, you know, pencil um, traced area there or shape. Okay, so I've done it in my pattern and then if you want to double it up like I have, do it again on plain white because that is what I've done with this one here. So there are two layers, there's the white on the back and the pattern is on top of that, okay. So you now want to get this one, grab my scissors, get this one cut out. Okay, so that's all cut out. Also, if any of you have obviously got your digital cutting machines, then you can create these shapes with your brother, um, your brother scan and cut and your Cricut machines and stuff like that. So, you know, there's many ways to get this, which I am aware of. So now that one will just go over the top. If there's any white, in this case there isn't, but if there was any white just kind of poking out, then you can just trim that off. But I'm now gonna stick this one on to this one. Okay, so that's that now all stuck down. Next, you will want to make your hole punched holes. So obviously I've already gone and done them on this one, so I will pretend I haven't. And using a ruler, you want to, where the kind of highest, the highest curved part of the heart is, I've come down half an inch, okay? So come down half an inch and I've come in an inch. Um, yeah, yeah, come in, it's about an inch and one eighth of an inch from the sides there. Whatever you do on this one, we're then gonna trace onto this one anyway. So I've already put my ribbon through, but again, imagine my ribbon's not through. Sit this one over the top, and then I'm just going to, with my, pull that through a bit like that. Actually, that would be much easier, and then I don't have the knot, so I can get it nice and flat. So with that lying nice and flat on there, pull the ribbon away, I can just do a pencil mark 
through to the bottom there okay so it saves you having to re you know measure again and it's all ready there now for you to let me just move that over there and then I can just punch both of those like so now usually I use eyelets to seal my um, any you know hole punched holes just to kind of strengthen them and you know it means they can last longer but I picked these up I used to use these a long long time ago especially in school when I was you know making you know if we had essays and things like that I used to use these just to keep it all protected but they're just little um sticky oh gosh um binder sticky binder ring protectors now I've also in China got this really cool device which I'm not going to be able to use it with these ones, it's already got them in, but basically if I grab this piece of scrap here, if you'd hole punched, in fact I can do it exactly here, hole punch the hole, let's move that out of the way, and then this one here, you just open up the top, you hold it over and you stick it down and it gives you these, and you can get all different refills for it, just take this out here, I know my friend will be, if she sees this one, she picked one up because we were together when she came to visit me. Um, but you can see them all there where you pop them all on. But basically, or you can stamp it down first like that. So it's a sticker. And then do your hole punch. And I've got all different printed ones. And they are really cute. I use them in my uh, diaries, my planners and stuff. But see, there's the one where I've done it the other way around. If you do it, if you stick it first and then hole punch it. But look. Just cool. I mean, they're plain blue, but you can imagine you get all different colours and stuff. But that is what these are, but obviously not in that little machine. So now I'm going to grab these two. So they're plastic, so it just means they won't rip. So that's why they're always used in stationary, you know, folders and things like that. So stick that one on there, like so. And I'll do my ribbon once I have added the bottom to make the bag itself because then it's easier to check we've got the right length. Okay, so you will have two of these. So everything I've just done there, you need to do twice and you will have these two like so. Just oh, pop that to one side. So now with this piece here that we've burnished, we folded in half, we just wanna take a couple of, well, a couple, you wanna take like a triangle. See how I've cut it there, so if I remove that, we've now got this triangle coming off of that middle score line. So again, if I come around here, maybe do it, if you cut up, see, like that, and then on an angle, like so, like so. We're gonna be, now, when we bring that together, it takes that bulk off. So see, we can now stick it at the angle we need it to be without having, you know, too much if I was to do it like that and hadn't cut that off, it would be overhanging now. So next, I will start with this one just because I haven't got the ribbon on it. And you want to grab your glue and pop it on one of the sides. Actually, I'll do it on both, like so. And you want to start from the very bottom, so bring it up and kind of it can, you know, it doesn't matter if it goes over that one or that one's over that one, it doesn't matter. So bring it down and you want to get it as close to the bottom and then you want your sides to obviously not go over the edge. So wherever you can get them as close to the, the outside there and the back like so. If I bring that up, can you see it's right up to where I can get it there, which means it would be the same there and it's right down to the bottom there. As long as you start from the bottom and get both of these, they will be perfectly level because this is six inches on both sides. Okay, so that one's stuck there and that one's stuck there. And then grab the glue again and just get these two covered like so and kind of, again, stick that bit down but it will find its kind of home in a minute. And again, start from the bottom I can see exactly how far up I need to come because it's almost touching the bottom like so. And then just bring in that side one right to the edge. And again, that one there. Just kind of hold them with your fingers and the bottom. Flip it all over and you can go inside 
you've got a little bit of wiggle room. If you want to use double sided tape you can but the wet glue is good because you can just move it a little bit just make sure you get that really stuck down and now there is your gift bag so it comes together instantly then what I've done is I've just pushed in these bits here just push them up and squeeze in and it will just allow you you may want to put a hole punch through here and do a bow fastening right in the middle there it's entirely up to you but I just thought that just does help when you kind of hold it together okay so that's that piece done then we can put the ribbon in and get it decorated so let's just pop this on while I'm here so this one's going to go make sure you got your point of the heart again lined up with the point of this one roughly in the middle like so and then I've just got a glue dot here which I'm just going to pop into the middle of the butterfly making sure it lifts off there we go I'm going to have that one just the same as before coming off the top there pop the ribbon through from the front inside and you just want to tie two knots so just double knot and that will stop it coming back through like so and then I'm just going to trim that little bit off and then bring it around pop this piece through and then hold it up this is obviously when you're doing the second one so the first one you'll just pop in and just decide on what length and then when you go to put the second one in you want to hold it up as if you're carrying it and when you've got them exact inside here just with your pencil just pop a pencil mark on your ribbon because you'll cover this with your knot right by where the hole is and you can see there where I've got my pencil mark and then I'm just going to do the knot again making sure I go right up to where that pencil mark is I might have enough for my boat <laughs> double knot again I'm going to really cut this close <laughs> there we go so now oh, and I've done it again I've done this on the other one make sure you thread it through before you knot it otherwise you do what I've just done and you won't be able to fit it through but if you just undo one of them like so I should be able to squeeze yeah that one will go through it's why you need to double knot unless you've got a smaller hole punch then you'll be okay there we go hopefully that's still the same length now it might be slight oh no it's okay it's a little bit looser on the back I can adjust that one off camera but there you go that's what you need to do but obviously put it through before and then see if I can get a very small bow I have got much better on my bows but this is beyond Oh, I'm just trying to squeeze it through. Don't think it's going to go. Mm. Might be the smallest. No, the, the ribbon's too thick for the bow to be that small. <laughs> I don't think that's going to cut it. I will have to do that off camera, but basically you can see on that one there, that's what I'm trying to achieve, just the same bow. So I'm almost there, just need to add that bow there. But there you go, there is the gift bag. So they are really, really easy to make. You can make this with any shape. Now you've seen how you put it together. You can make them any size you want. It's really, really easy to do. Like I said, my template is just there. If you do, you know, have your printer in your craft room then by all means print it off for free because it is a nice size but like I said if you are computer savvy yourself and you've got all your digital machines then I'm sure you will be able to work all of that out but yeah I hope you felt inspired by this year's first tutorial for the Valentine's series like I said it's going to be every day now for the next five maybe seven days and uh, yeah as always please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more thanks for watching bye